Actually, I have an El Han story for you. So, <laughs> so uh, the other night on the house floor was not the, my first jihad squad moment. Uh, so I was getting into an elevator with one of my staffers. And he and I are we're leaving the Capitol, we're going back to my office, and we get in the elevator, and I see a Capitol Police officer running hurriedly to the elevator. I see fret all over his face. And he's reaching, and I'm like, what? I can't, the door's shutting. Like, I can't, I can't open it. Like, what's happening? I look to my left, and there she is, oh. Ilhan Omar. Oops. And I said, well, she doesn't have a backpack. We should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we only had one floor to go, and I was like, ah, do I say it or not? I looked Ooh. over, and I said, oh, look. The Jihad Squad decided to show up for work today. <laughs> oh, woo, woo. Don't worry, it's just her staffers on Twitter that talk for her. She, she's not tough in person. She doesn't, yes. <laughs> so That was a sitting member of Congress publicly joking about the fact that she harasses one of her colleagues. I mean, just for a second, imagine if you did this at your job to one of your coworkers. I've worked in fast food, I've worked in retail, and they have higher standards than Congress. When I was working at Subway, if I joked about the fact that I said this to one of my Muslim coworkers, I would be fired like that. But as a member of Congress, I mean, does anybody expect there to be real ramifications for this dangerous rhetoric? No, not at all. And Ilhan Omar explained via Twitter that this isn't even a real story. She made it up because she thought that the Islamophobia was funny. Fact, this buffoon looks down when she sees me at the Capitol. This whole story is made up. Sad she thinks bigotry gets her clout. Anti-Muslim bigotry isn't funny and shouldn't be normalized. Congress can't be a place where hateful and dangerous Muslim tropes get no condemnation. But unfortunately, it is. And I don't have very high standards or expectations for Congress, but I mean, the right, they're usually the loudest when it comes to civility and decorum and the need to be respectable. But when one of their own does something like this, that is overtly prejudice, I mean, is there going to be anything other than crickets? What's the expectation here? Now, you might think, yeah, this is clearly insensitive and bad, but it's it's a joke. Now, that doesn't excuse it, but she doesn't joke about Ilhan Omar being a dangerous terrorist. These aren't just jokes. So when she was responding to Il Ilhan Omar's statement on Israeli aggression over the summer, uh, look at the way she framed the conversation. Look at the way that she talked about Ilhan Omar specifically. And you've got Ilhan Omar saying something ridiculous and AOC basically saying the same thing. These are people who are U.S. representatives who represent a lot of Jewish people. These are U.S. representatives who are supposedly represent peace and understand that Israel's our best friend in the Middle East. What was your response when you saw what they had to say? Well, uh, it's really unfortunate that we have United States representatives who are full-time propagandists for, uh, for Hamas, for, for uh, state-sponsored terrorism. Yeah. And, and, you know, when I think about state-sponsored terrorism, uh, I think about politicians with suicide belts uh, strapped to their body. And uh, it's really unfortunate that we have uh, politicians right here in America who uh, support this same terrorism. So when she says something like, you know, when I think about state-sponsored terrorism, I think about politicians with suicide belts strapped to their bodies. She is priming you, either wittingly or unwittingly, to think about members of the squad who she's referencing in that way, who she also jokes is a terrorist. And this is specifically why Ilhan Omar gets a lot of death threats. It's not a coincidence. Because, you know, people like Lauren Boebert, they dehumanize and belittle and they're purposefully hyperbolic about Ilhan Omar in a way that makes it seem as if the death threats and harassment are legitimate. Because when one of Lauren Boebert's deranged fans sends a death threat to Ilhan Omar, not that her fans specifically are doing that, but when Ilhan Omar, more broadly speaking, gets a death threat, it's not like people think that they're doing wrong. They send this to her thinking, well, I'm just defending America because this is someone who's a terrorist or at a minimum a terrorist sympathizer. So if I get, you know, um, send her a death threat, if I put her in danger, well, that's fine because, you know, I'm protecting America. Terrorism is bad. Therefore, you know, this terrorist needs to be um, put in place. Now, the irony about that clip where Lauren Boebert was heavily suggesting that Ilhan Omar was a terrorist or at a minimum was sympathetic 
towards terrorism. Um, the irony is that she was responding to Israeli aggression, actual state-sponsored terrorism. She was responding to the Israeli government's attempt to illegally evict Palestinians out of their homes over the summer. She's the one who's against terrorism. You're the one who's supporting state-sponsored terrorism here, Lauren Boebert. And also, if you are someone who literally aided and abetted the extremists on January 6th, maybe you should shut the fuck up about terrorism yourself because you very clearly don't care about terrorism if you were tweeting out the location of the Speaker of the House for dangerous extremists to find her and possibly harm her. Now, that original video blew up over the weekend, so there was a lot of backlash, and Lauren Boebert talked about how um, she reflected in an Instagram post over the weekend and she wanted to call Ilhan Omar and, you know, presumably apologize. But rather than actually apologizing to Ilhan Omar after reflecting on her behavior, she demanded that Ilhan Omar apologize. Hey everyone, this is Lauren with a quick update on a phone call I had today with squad member Ilhan Omar. I had reached out to her Friday and three days later, I was able to connect with her on the phone because I wanted to let her know directly that I had reflected on my previous remarks. Now, as a strong Christian woman who values faith deeply, I never want anything I say to offend someone's religion. So I told her that even after I put out a public statement to that effect, she said that she still wanted a public apology because what I had done wasn't good enough. So I reiterated to her, what I had just said. She kept asking for a public apology. So I told Ilhan Omar that she should make a public apology to the American people for her anti-American, anti-Semitic, anti-police rhetoric. She continued to press and I continued to press back. And then Representative Omar hung up on me. You know, I can't imagine why she'd hang up on you after you call her a terrorist and then ask her to apologize. This is the dumbest person in Congress. I mean, I used to think that it was Louis Gohmert. I used to even think that Marjorie Greene perhaps was dumber. But Lauren Boebert is very clearly the dumbest member of Congress. To feign outrage after somebody hangs up on you when you're being an asshole to them and then you demand that they apologize. I mean, you just you have to be stupid to be perplexed as to why that person wouldn't want to engage with you. Now, Ilhan Omar released a statement following this phone call. And she said, today, I graciously accepted a call from Representative Lauren Boebert in the hope of receiving a direct apology for falsely claiming she met me in an elevator, suggesting I was a terrorist and for a history of anti-Muslim hate. Instead of apologizing for her Islamophobic comments and fabricated lies, Representative Boebert refused to publicly acknowledge her hurtful and dangerous comments. She instead doubled down on her rhetoric and I decided to end the unproductive call. I believe in engaging with those we disagree with respectfully, but not when that disagreement is rooted in outright bigotry and to date, the Republican Party leadership has done nothing to condemn and hold their own members accountable for repeated instances of anti-Muslim hate and harassment. This is not about one hateful statement or one politician. It is about a party that has mainstreamed bigotry and hatred. It is time for Republican leader McCarthy to actually hold his party accountable. And on that note, I am not going to hold my breath. And I don't think anyone should because nothing is going to come of this. But in a normal country where we actually didn't tolerate hatred and bigotry, there would be overwhelming pressure for her to resign. Everyone in unison would be calling on her to step down. Even the Republican Party, who they are absolutely Islamophobic, but they at least want to man maintain some level of an appearance that they're not outright explicitly hateful. So you'd think that just to at least maintain the facade and keep up appearances, they would even tepidly condemn this. But I mean, overall, they like what Lauren Boebert is doing. The Republican Party, they don't rely on dog whistles anymore. They just say the quiet part loud. So this isn't necessarily surprising. And the sad part is that because there's going to be no consequences, no real consequences, I mean, Lauren Boebert is going to continue with this rhetoric where she refers to her colleagues as jihad squad members and accuses them of being terrorists, which will continue to incite harassment and violence and death threats against Ilhan Omar. And the cycle will just continue. And eventually someone will unfortunately probably get hurt because of this rhetoric. But this is America and um, people like this shitty people, they get away with things like this. And not only that, they usually get rewarded for it. So I'm sure she'll go on Fox News and talk about how she was canceled. Maybe she'll get a book deal. I, I don't even know. But we know there's going to be no consequences. And at best, there'll be 
tepid condemnation. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.